All right, so we're ready for a deep dive into medical thrillers, you know, where the autopsy table is like a detective's best friend. All those secrets hidden right there under the skin. Fascinating stuff. It really is. You know, that mix of science and suspense, I think it really taps into how curious people are about the human body. Yeah. And, well, everyone likes a little bit of darkness in their stories, right? Oh, absolutely. And you've given me a ton of great sources for this. We've got book reviews, some articles about the genre itself, and even an interview with Patricia Cornwell, the queen of medical thrillers. Got to hear what she has to say. We're going to really get into all of it. How medical thrillers came about, how they've changed their impact on things like, you know, pop culture and TV shows. And, of course, got to give the listeners some recommendations, some must-reads to keep them up all night. Sounds like a plan. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? Back in 1990 with Patricia Cornwell's postmortem. It wasn't just a good story. It really changed the game. Brought this whole new level of realism to forensics, right? The medical examiner, all the details of a death investigation. And he gave us Dr. K. Scarpetta. Brilliant, complex, definitely a strong woman, a forensic pathologist. She became, well, pretty iconic in the genre. Okay, so before we get too far into Scarpetta's world, let's take a step back. What exactly does a medical examiner do? Well, they're the ones who figure out how and why someone died, mm -hmm. especially in cases that are suspicious, you know, where things aren't clear. They're like medical detectives looking for clues in the body itself. That's a great way to put it. And, well, they have to use all their knowledge, mm -hmm. anatomy, physiology, you know, all that to find the truth. They work pretty closely with law enforcement, too, helping to bring criminals to justice. Which is exactly what Scarpetta does, right? She's not just doing autopsies. She's looking at evidence, figuring out patterns, using all her knowledge to solve these really complex crimes. And she's doing it in a world, well, let's face it, is dominated by men. So she's dealing with people who don't believe her, prejudice, even danger, all while she's trying to find the truth. You know, one of the things that really struck me in Cornwell's interview was how much she emphasized accuracy. I mean, she talked about spending hours and hours in morgues, watching autopsies, even going out with police officers to see what they do firsthand. And that really shows in her writing. I mean, she doesn't shy away from the details, even the graphic ones, but she presents them in a way that's informative. And it's still a good read. She also talked about the responsibility of writing about these kinds of things, sensitive subjects. You know, respecting the victims, their families, not making the violence seem glamorous. Yeah, it's a tough line to walk. And Cornwell... Well, I think she does it really carefully. She doesn't try to make crime look cool. She shows what it really does. The consequences for everyone involved, not just the victims, but for society as a whole. Postmortem was a big hit, not just as a book. It had this huge impact on pop culture. It kind of paved the way for shows like CSI, Cold Case Files, all those. Totally. Suddenly, everyone was interested in forensic science. The idea that science could solve crimes, well, it captivated people. But we got to remember... TV isn't always real life. Oh, for sure. These shows, they often make investigations look way faster and simpler than they really are. They've got people interested in forensics, but they also make it seem a little, well, a little too easy. Yeah, so we can enjoy the drama, the intrigue, but it's good to be a little skeptical, too. The real world of forensics is, well, it's a lot more complicated. Mm, absolutely. It's not all black and white. There are a lot of gray areas. And as we keep talking about medical thrillers, I think we'll see that play out even more. How these stories show what's real, but also shape how we see science, justice, even the human condition itself. All right, back to Dr. Scarpetta then. So she's chief medical examiner, which means she's not just doing the autopsies herself, right? She's running a whole team, a department, and dealing with office politics? I bet that's fun. Oh, yeah. And all while she's got her own personal stuff going on. You know, things from her past, family drama, it all adds up. Speaking of family, that's one of the things that makes these books so interesting. All those recurring characters, each one with their own personality, they all play a part in the story. Right. You've got Detective Pete Marino, gruff, old school cop. He and Scarpetta, they butt heads sometimes. Their styles are so different. But he comes to respect her and they become, well, pretty vital allies. And there's her niece, Lucy, total tech whiz. Right. Probably more comfortable with computers than Scarpetta is with a scalpel. She brings this young energy to the stories, new skills, and you can see how technology is becoming more important in forensics, even back then. And then you can't forget her sister, Dorothy. She adds a whole other layer of drama, especially when she ends up marrying Detective Marino. Oh, can you imagine those family dinners? That's got to be awkward. But you know what? All those relationships, as messy as they can be, they make the stories feel more real. 
Scarpetta isn't just this brilliant scientist. She's a woman with real problems, just like everyone else. And the criminal she's after, they use that against her, which makes the stories even more suspenseful, I think. Okay, so the stories themselves, the Scarpetta series, I mean, it's massive, almost 30 books, each one with the new puzzles for her to solve. The first one, post-mortem, she's chasing this serial killer. They call him Mr. Nobody, terrorizing Richmond. It's our introduction to her world, her way of doing things, how determined she is to get justice for those victims, the autopsies, how careful she is, how she sees those tiny clues, even when it means going up against people in authority. Then you've got Body of Evidence. That one takes us into the literary world. A famous author is murdered and their manuscript is missing. Scarpetta has to dive into the world of words, right? <laughs> Try to find clues in the author's writing, seeing this whole dark side of creativity and ambition. All that remains, that one's about these couples who disappear. She's got to put together skeletons, literally, trying to find connections with all these victims. That book, it shows how hard it is to identify people when someone's gone to a lot of trouble to hide who they are. And putting the pieces together, figuring out what happened, from just fragments of evidence. It takes a toll, even on someone like Scarpetta. And then, in Cruel and Unusual, talk about a dilemma. Can a dead murderer commit a new crime? It's about this killer who's already been convicted, but it seems like he's striking again, even though he's dead. Scarpetta has to rethink everything she thought she knew about death and justice. Yeah, that one really makes you think about the limits of what we can know, even with science. Mm. about the nature of evil, whether it's some things just can't be explained. It sticks with you, that's for sure. What's so cool about those first few books, and really the whole series, is how Cornwall mixes all the forensic stuff with the characters' personal lives. We're not just following a crime, we're getting to know these people. Their relationships, their struggles, their wins, it's all connected. That's what makes them so good. They're not just puzzles, they're about what it means to be human, how fragile life is, and how even in the darkest times, there's still hope, still resilience. It's really that mix, you know, her work and her personal life that makes the Scarpetta series so good. We see how heavy it all is dealing with death and violence all the time. It changes how she sees the world, how she relates to people. Yeah, you can't really call her a happy-go-lucky kind of person, can you? Some of the reviews you gave me, readers said she was, well, kind of aloof, even cold sometimes. That's part of what makes her interesting, though, right? She's so smart, analytical. But she's also carrying all this knowledge, all this darkness she's seen. It's got to affect you. And that darkness gets pretty close sometimes. I mean, people she trusted betraying her, personal tragedies, even people trying to kill her. Yeah, I mean, that stuff changes you. It makes you cautious, maybe what? even a little cynical after a while. But she's not all tough. You see moments where she's vulnerable, especially with Lucy and Marino. You no, know, for sure. Her relationship with Lucy is something else. It's not just the typical Anne and Anise thing. It's deeper. They're colleagues, they can side in each other. I mean, they're practically partners in solving these crimes. Lucy's got the tech skills, Scarpetta's got the medical knowledge, and they've been through so much together, good and bad, it creates a bond you don't see very often. And then there's Marino, that rough around the edges cop. He clashes with Scarpetta's whole scientific way of doing things, at least at first. It's really interesting seeing them together. He's kind of old school, goes with his gut, uses his experience. She's all about data analysis, totally different approaches. But they learn to respect each other. Even if it takes a while, they realize they need each other to solve these tough cases. And of course, it gets even more complicated when he marries Dorothy, Scarpetta's sister. Oh yeah, talk about awkward family gatherings. Dorothy's a whole other story, always bringing chaos into Scarpetta's life. She's like a whirlwind, impulsive, emotional, always stirring things up. She adds this whole level of conflict, family stuff, mixed right in with the crimes. Scarpetta's got to balance her family and her work. Not always easy. It's interesting how the series has changed over time. Cornwall, she takes chances, tries different ways of telling the story, really pushes the boundaries of what a medical thriller can be. Some of the later books, well, some readers weren't so happy with them. They felt like she strayed too far from what made the series so great in the first place, even though they were still popular overall. Yeah, I read some reviews where people said Scarpetta wasn't as relatable anymore, the plots got too complicated, and there was too much focus on technology, not enough on the human side of things. That's tough, you know? When you've got a series that runs for so long, how do you keep it new and exciting, but still stay true to the characters, the world you've built? It's a balance, for sure. It seems like Cornwall was listening, though, because... Her newest one, Autopsy, a lot of people are calling it a return to form. Definitely feels that way. 
it's back to what Scarpetta does best. She's brilliant. She's determined. She wants justice, all those things. And it's back in Virginia, familiar ground for her and for the readers who've been there from the beginning. One review I saw said autopsy really captures what's going on in the world today, you know, with all the political stuff, people being divided, the pandemic and all that. It's interesting, right? These books are fiction, but they can show us the things we're afraid of in the real world. They let us deal with those fears, think them through in a way that's safe. At least we hope it's safe, right? That's a good point. So you mentioned earlier that Cornwall does a ton of research. In one of the videos, she talked about how important it is to see for yourself, <laughs> to really get into the world you're writing about. Yeah, she even went to a forensic anthropology school, learned how to dig up and analyze human remains. I mean, that's dedication right there. And she still have the shoes and hat she wore when she worked in law enforcement. It's like she wants to keep a part of that world with her, a reminder of what made her the writer she is. And you can see that in her books, all those details, the way she goes above and beyond. It makes them feel real, like you're right there with Scarpetta, seeing what she sees, hearing the sounds, even smelling those smells, you know, in the autopsy room. Not that I'd want to do that in real life. She talked about the emotional part of it, too, you know, writing about all that dark stuff, how you have to feel for the victims, but also be detached enough to do the work. Yeah. She doesn't take it lightly, that's for sure. She's not just trying to entertain people. She's dealing with some really heavy stuff. Human cruelty, how fragile life is, all those things. One thing that stood out to me, she gets frustrated when people call her books mysteries. She said there's nothing mysterious about a dead body on a table. It's a tragedy. It's a life cut short. A family that's lost someone. That's powerful. It reminds you that behind every crime scene, every autopsy report, there are real people who are hurting. So we can enjoy the puzzle of it all, figuring out who did it, but we shouldn't forget about the human cost. Absolutely. And as we move on to other medical thrillers, beyond just Scarpetta, it's important to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's broaden our horizons a bit. You gave me this article, 11 heart-pounding medical thriller books for Patricia Cornwell fans. It's got all these suggestions for people who love strong female characters, realistic forensics, and mysteries that keep you guessing. It's a good starting point, for sure. Shows you how many different kinds of medical thrillers there are. One that caught my eye was Immunity by Laurie Andrews. It's a rip-from-the-headlines kind of story. A pathologist fighting this new, deadly disease. And Andrews, she's not just a novelist. She's an expert on biotechnologies, right? Makes it even more believable. Oh, totally. And the main character, Dr. Alexandra Blake, she's up against people who just won't listen to her warnings. Which, you know, given what's happened in the world lately, it's even more chilling. It makes you think about how people react to science, even when it's trying to help. There can be skepticism, fear, even people just straight up denying it. Yeah, that one definitely sounds relevant and something to think about. What else is on the list? Well, if you want something with that Southern Gothic feel, a little spooky, New Orleans Requiem by DJ Donaldson might be for you. Okay, New Orleans, I'm already interested. So it's about this chief medical examiner, Andy Broussard. He teams up with a criminal psychologist. They're trying to catch this killer who's leaving these cryptic messages, get this, on Scrabble tiles. Wow, a killer with a sense of style. I love it. What's cool is how it takes this familiar idea, the medical examiner as the main character, but puts it in this unique place. All the atmosphere, the history of New Orleans, it really adds something. And if you want something more classic, there's A Case of Need by Michael Crichton. Wait a minute, the Jurassic Park guy. Yep, that's him. This was one of his early books, before he got really famous. Mm -hmm. It's about this suspicious death. It happens in the medical community in Boston. Gets into all the ethical stuff doctors deal with, the pressure, what happens when ambition and betrayal get mixed in. I always like it when authors can write different kinds of stories, different genres, shows how talented they are, how they can adapt. For sure. And if you're into FBI thrillers, there's The Burning Man by Solange Ritchie. What's special about that one? Well, you've got a forensic pathologist again, but this time they work for the FBI. They're on the hunt for this really sadistic killer. It's fast paced, lots of action, high stakes, and the main character is tough. They can handle it. So you've got the medical knowledge, the law enforcement side, and a villain who's really scary. Sounds like a good mix. Okay, what else? You're in the mood for a historical thriller. There's City of the Dead by Herbert Lieberman takes place in Manhattan in the 1970s. The chief medical examiner's daughter gets kidnapped. Oh, wow. That's intense. Right. It's gritty, really captures the atmosphere of New York back then. Not all sunshine and roses, that's for sure. This list really does have it all. Different settings, different kinds of stories. What else have you got for me? Well, there's Blunt Impact by Lisa Black. 
It's about this forensic scientist. She's convinced that a construction worker's death, they said it was suicide, but she thinks it was murder, and she's going to prove it. I always like those stories where someone sees something that others miss, uncovers the truth even when it's hidden. What makes this one stand out? Black's a forensic scientist herself, so you can really tell in her writing. The details, the way she explains the science, it's really impressive. Okay, that one's going on my to-read list. What else? Something a little different. Ashes. Ashes by Charles Adkins. This one gets into forensic psychology. The main character is trying to stop this serial killer from being transferred to a less secure facility. High stakes, right? That's a really interesting idea. It gets into the psychology of these killers, how they think, and how do you know if they're still dangerous? It's not always clear cut. And there's the ethical side too. How do you keep people safe, but also protect the rights of individuals, even if they've done terrible things? This deep dive has been amazing. So many different kinds of medical thrillers I never even knew about. Okay, what else is on this list? How about a story about a plastic surgeon? He comes up with this miracle invention, but it turns out it might have deadly consequences. That's Implant by F. Paul Wilson. Ooh, medical gone wrong. I like it. It taps into those fears we have, you know? What if science goes too far, especially when it comes to our own bodies? And then there's Pious Deception by Susan Dunlap. This one's got a medical examiner, but they become a private investigator. Mm -hmm. They're trying to solve a priest's death in Phoenix, Arizona. So many different jobs within the forensics world. It's cool. Pathologists, scientists, psychologists, now a PI with a medical background. You really need a whole team to solve these cases, all those different skills. You got it. And it shows how medical thrillers can be about so many different people, so many places. But what connects them is using medical knowledge to solve a crime. Okay, what else is on this awesome list? We've got Rubbernecker by Belinda Bauer. This one's about a medical student. They have Asperger's, and they stumble across a murder in the cadaver lab. That's a really unique perspective. Someone who sees the world differently, how they deal with social stuff, how they perceive things. And it makes you think about who can be a hero. You don't have to be a certain way. Brilliance and insight can come from anywhere. This list is gold. Okay, last one. What is it? Last but not least, we have Grounds for Appeal by Bernard Knight. It's a historical thriller set in Wales in the 1950s. A home office pathologist investigating a headless body. Classic. A good old who unit with a forensic twist. I love how this list takes us all over the place, different times, different places. You really get a sense of how the genre has changed. And it shows that people have always been fascinated by death, mystery, and the power of science to uncover the truth. Some things never change. It's amazing how these books can be so entertaining, but also make you think. They challenge your ideas, make you see things in new ways. And they remind you that justice isn't always simple. There are ethical questions, messy situations. It's not always black and white. So yeah, we can enjoy the thrill of the chase, but we should also remember that these stories are about real things. For sure. And at the end of the day, these books are like holding up a mirror to ourselves, to our society. They show us our anxieties, our values, how we try to understand the good and the bad in the world, all mixed up together. Okay, so we've covered a lot. The history of medical thrillers, the impact of Patricia Cornwell and the Scarpetta series, how forensic science has changed, and how all this stuff plays out in the real world. It's been a wild ride, that's for sure. It has, and it really shows how medical thrillers with all the science, the suspense, the psychology, how they keep drawing people in. They make you think about your own mortality, the things that scare you, and what happens when science and justice collide. But hey, Let's not forget the fun part. I was watching this YouTube review of the Scarpetta series, and it was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. What was so funny? Well, the reviewer, she was talking about how much she loved the books, how well they're written, how they helped her through a tough time. But then she said, you know, if you're reading these alone at night, be careful. They can be a little creepy, especially if you're walking around by yourself. That's great. It reminds you that even with these serious, thought-provoking books, they can still be fun. A good escape. She also said she was hoping to get Patricia Cornwell on her podcast someday. Now, that would be a conversation I'd want to hear. Me too. It would be great to hear Cornwell talk about how this series has changed, how hard it is to write about this kind of stuff, and how her books have had such a big impact both on readers and on pop culture. It's pretty amazing, right, how one person, one author, can have such a big impact. Cornwell, she didn't just write stories. She opened this whole world up to people. Forensic science, it's everywhere now. TV shows, documentaries, even podcasts. Yeah, it's true. Look at all the true crime stuff that's out there now. Everyone's fascinated by it. Real detectives, people at home, they're all trying to figure out these real life cases. 
And a lot of it comes down to forensics. I think it's that thing, you know, we're drawn to the dark side, trying to figure out why people do terrible things. And the science itself, it's really cool. DNA, blood stains, all that digital stuff. It's like a puzzle. You use the evidence to figure out what happened, bring the truth out into the open. Mm -hmm. It's more than just science, though, isn't it? Whether it's a made-up story or a real case, there are real people affected. Families grieving, the investigators who are so dedicated, and the people who work in the justice system, they have to make tough choices. It's all connected. Exactly. And I think as medical thrillers keep going, we'll see even more of that. The psychology, the emotions, all that. In what way? Well... We keep learning more about the brain, how people behave. Yeah. Writers can use that, <laughs> you know, go deeper into their characters' heads, figure out what makes them tick, why they do what they do, the scars that stay with people even after the crime is over. Yeah, it's not just about catching the bad guy. It's about trying to understand what makes people do these things, the good and the bad, how it all gets mixed up. And now we're talking more about trauma, mental health, how it affects everyone. I think that'll be a big part of these stories going forward. It makes me think about technology, too, how that'll change things. Oh, yeah, all that new stuff. Yeah. AI, gene editing, our whole lives are online now. It changes how forensics works, creates new problems, new possibilities. I mean, think about it. What if we could solve crimes with algorithms, or people could change their DNA to get away with stuff? It's like something out of a movie, but it could happen. And that's ripe for storytelling, right? Yeah. Definitely. And as all this tech becomes part of our everyday lives, it'll become part of the stories too. New ethical questions, new ways to build suspense, who knows what'll come next. What's interesting is how this genre, even though it's about science and medicine, it can also be about what's going on in the world, you know? All the stuff we're worried about. Exactly. Public health, the ethics of science, how technology is changing us. These stories can be like warnings. They make you think about the choices we make as individuals, as a society. And with the world getting more complicated all the time, I think those themes are going to become even more important. One thing I'm excited about is seeing more diverse voices in the genre. Me too. We need more stories that represent different points of view, different experiences, different cultures. It's got to reflect the real world, right? Yeah, for sure. Stories about how crime affects communities that don't always get heard. Stories that question how justice works, that show the human experience in all its forms. Absolutely. More voices, more perspectives. That's how any genre gets better. It makes the stories richer, helps us understand each other, and lets us connect with people and situations that might be totally different from our own lives. It's about going beyond the same old formulas, trying new things, telling stories that feel real and relevant, you know, in a world that's always changing. So as we wrap this up, what's next for medical thrillers? What can we expect? I think it's a genre that's never going to stand still. Always pushing the limits, finding new ways to grab you and make you think. It shows us what we're afraid of, what we're curious about, and how we're always trying to figure out this whole human thing. The good, the bad, all of it. And it's a genre that keeps coming up with new ideas, new insights. It gets under your skin, you know, so. makes you think about life, death, everything in between. So if you're looking for something that's both exciting and makes you think, Something that combines science and suspense with characters you can't forget? Well, the world of medical thrillers is right there waiting for you. Grab a book, turn down the lights, get ready for a wild ride. It's a world where science is power and the secrets of life and death are hiding in plain sight.